we will uh, get back into our study of resisting the devil and then you know uh, taking on the devil um, going against the the devil so before we go any further i just wanted to ask you if there's been any instance in your personal life where you know you've you've said no devil you can't you know that kind of an attitude you've carried through an experience so now uh, if anyone would like to share you can Okay, so if not, then uh, yeah, I think I I can share. So this was when um, my mum, uh, this uh, she was uh, very strangely like you know we were taking her for her regular checkups and all that. So everything was going on, but strangely, um, you know there were certain symptoms, and then they <laughs> figured out that. Uh, at that point in time you know she was diagnosed with final stage cancer so it was a very big surprise for all of us uh, but anyway you know that happened and uh, at the time when um, uh, these reports came out uh, one by one you know different doctors they would just come they i mean i, I used to work in that hospital so many of them were my friends uh, so they were they were um, te telling me both you know in officially as well as personally they used to tell me that oh she's not going to make it you know there's all these issues these challenges so long story short there were symptoms and uh, there were uh, some uh, you know conditions which were very very um, you know it was very serious so literally they said two days like she will not make it for more than two days in the hospital and uh, you decide what you want to do um but any anyway so the thing is that she lived for at least about two and a half years after that um but when these things started happening right from the hospital i remember uh, uh, you know there there were um, so many miracles that god did and this attitude i'm telling you right of like you just get angry with the devil and you say no devil you know you can't have you can't have it i will not let go of my inheritance uh, what is mine in christ jesus healing i'm holding on to that so god did so many miracles they said like only two days uh, she would survive because even the life support was not helping but a miracle took place you know they shifted her out and uh, they just said oh call all your relatives in fact all my relatives came to see her uh, and all but her oxygen saturation levels uh, we prayed okay and uh, literally like i prayed over a food item and i gave it to her and at that moment i i within myself you know i just said lord nothing is working medicines are not working life support is not working but you are a healing god nothing changes that and i i command the saturation levels to come up in the name of jesus uh, they became normal from that moment you know and uh, uh, exactly what i'm teaching you here like you resist the devil you command so i literally have seen these things um, in many instances but i'm telling you of a little serious one uh, but i have seen it i it was so amazing that even the doctor at that time who was responsible for the oxygen saturation level she was shocked she looked at the the a recording of the saturation and she was like how is it possible we didn't put her on medication nothing and you know it has come up so uh, you know things like that and uh, once she was discharged again i went for review meetings and all and then the doctors would say things like uh, one of my good friends uh, like that doctor was telling me see you understand the medical things you know she won't make it so don't try don't even try hard give up so he was just trying to put it in a nice way to me but within myself you know i i still remember uh, 
I uh, sitting there on that chair. I was listening. All the words were going into my ears. I was holding the reports in my hands. And I just said, I reject every word of sickness, of affliction, of oppression in the name of Jesus. I didn't tell him, but I'm telling that within my spirit. Even after I got up from there, I said, no, she will live. Uh, they said she will not be able to walk, but she was walking till about the last week of her death. You know, so she made it and, uh, you know, so many things happened contrary to what the doctors had predicted. So it was really a huge miracle. Um, so, you know, it's like when the devil tries to come against you, uh, really to to tap into the power of God, to claim it and to see that inheritance manifest, we have to put up a fight. We can't say, oh, okay, so sad. Okay, I give up. You know, no, no, we, we can't do that. And uh, truly, when we hold on and we are ready to wrestle, resist the devil and say, no devil, you will not have it. You know, uh, healing is my inheritance and uh, I will have it. So I really saw the manifestation of that. And till today, um, you know, the doctors, when they talk about my mother, they say she was a sign and a wonder because uh, medically, you know, for somebody to survive at a certain saturation level with like her bones had changed, the shape of her bones had changed. So anyway, I won't go into the details. There were lots of things which were not conducive for a reasonably good quality of life, but she managed with a decent quality of life, uh, you know, till she actually passed away. Uh, but I know for a fact that it was the power of God being released, uh, you know, for her to make it. So this was one of the most serious uh, things in my life where I have, I, I, I believe that, you know, really needed to put up a fight against the devil. And I have seen God's power, you know, manifest. And I'm very grateful for miracles that are, happen you know big and small but to to have that sense and you rebuke the devil when um, the the enemy is coming against you so you know you 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 scold him no you can't do that and i command you in the name of jesus you know so uh you take it on you either be on the defensive or be on the offensive so uh, just something that i wanted to share to encourage all of us that whatever the situation easy difficult all this is real and uh, we will see god's victory manifest in our life so we can rebuke the next thing here is cast out so in this situation uh, when we see again i will use the term for a believer demonized okay if a believer is demonized by that we simply mean influenced by the devil uh, you know, to uh, uh, where um, the devil has started taking control okay, of the faculties of a person. So that is demonized. In such a situation, we can cast out that demon. We can say, now we've understood when we studied about demons, we said that they are disembodied creatures. They are looking for a habitation. So their temporary habitation is any host any person uh, who, who uh, uh, you know, has any, like an open door, they will come and they will, they will influence. So when you see that you know, somebody is demonized or in the case of an unbeliever, if they are, we use the term possessed, okay? But for a believer, this term possessed is very misleading, this English translation possessed. So we will not use that. What we can do is we can issue a command cast that demon out so what would what did jesus say there are passages given here in the bible from the bible where he cast out come out that's all jesus said come out and what happened the demon her had to yield to the authority of jesus and it comes out of that habitation temporary habitation which is the person and then you know, um, we have to work on strengthening the person. So how do we strengthen if that person is not saved, get them saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, ask them to plug into a good church and live a life of devotion, you know, full of the word, full of the, full of, um, you know, the presence of God. So then what happens? The 
demons cannot come in now, where do the demons go we've already had this discussion we know from matthew 12 they go about you know they're wandering around trying to find the next host so do they go to the fire hell fire no that is their final final destination but till such time they are wandering about trying to seek a place of rest or next habitation so we can cast out we can cast out demons okay so that is also something all believers can do you don't have to wait on uh, any pastor or anyone if situation arises where you have to cast out then yes you can do it we will discuss more about how to do this later on but i want to encourage all the believers okay so i uh, remember i was telling you we went for a conference and over there people were manifesting and uh, at that point you know i went as one of the young people um, <clears throat> there were other young people with me in church so um, you see really it is amazing uh, when the disciples jesus sent them I think Matthew 10, isn't it? Yeah, he sent them out and they went and they did the works. They came back. You know, they were so amazed and they told Jesus, you know, even the devils are subject to your name, Jesus. Like, wow, what is this? So they were really thrilled. So even us, as young people, because the situation came where we have to cast out demons, and Jesus never separated his ministry to say, oh, I'm only going to teach from the word. No, he was teaching, but he was delivering, he was healing. It was all like happening together. So it is very much a part of our ministry too. We can't say that uh, I won't do, you do, you, uh, you know, cast out demons. I can't cast out it's just a part of what the Spirit of God does. So we have to be open to it. So, you know, when it came to that, even those were some of my initial experiences of casting out demons, like the disciples, even I was amazed. I was like, is it that simple? Demons are just listening to the name of Jesus because there is that kind of authority in the name of Jesus. Okay, so... You know, we can issue a command to the demons and we will be amazed that the demons are trembling at the name of Jesus. Okay, like the way the disciples came back, we also come back and say, wow, Jesus, this kind of authority you have given us, it's amazing, it's amazing. So, when you see uh, demons taking control of individuals, mm, you and I can just... You know, come in there, use the authority, just cast out the demons and set people free. Okay, so go on the offensive. We can also destroy the works of the devil. Okay, so this word destroy, we see in Hebrews 2.14, where Jesus destroyed Satan on the cross. What did Jesus do? We've discussed it, isn't it? In the victory of the cross. We said that he has... When you destroy something, is it is it possible to use it anymore? You can't, isn't it? If uh, a beautiful gadget, I remember once I had a really nice phone, which I loved. Then um, uh, I was walking on the road. I had removed the, you put a case, right, on, on the phone to protect it. I don't know why. Maybe I wanted to clean it or what. Just temporarily I removed the case. And that day when I was out, it didn't have a case. Suddenly it slipped and fell from my hand, crack, fully cracked. I couldn't use it. It was such a nice, uh, you know, in gadget. I really loved it, but it's gone. When something is destroyed, you cannot expect it to function anymore. So in that way, there are situations and circumstances. Of course, we know that the devil is, uh, you know, completely destroyed. His power is destroyed by the cross. We, that is a uh, understood fact. It's a spiritual reality. Now, we, by issuing a command with our words, what are we doing? What destruction has already happened, uh, you know, we, we are calling that to, to work in our situation. So we, we uh, say or we remind the devil. Don't, don't you remember? 
your work has been destroyed you have been destroyed on the cross of calvary you know we can say that to the devil when we are praying when we are you know rebuking when we are casting out a demon we can tell the devil this is what the lord jesus has done to you don't you know you have been destroyed on the cross of calvary and not just that you know 1 john 3:8 we see that jesus came to destroy the works of the devil over there you know the word destroy uh, doesn't mean rendering useless like what i just explained to you but it means loosen it means to um, you know like break up or or uh, dissolve that that kind of uh, uh, an application so the works of the devil when i pray uh, i can say you know maybe i'm praying for somebody and i say oh the sickness mm, from the root be destroyed in jesus name so it's like a stronghold but what i'm saying i'm saying like dissolve um you you uh, completely break up or you loosen You're no longer a stronghold but you know i i i destroy you so in that manner we can see that work of the devil being removed okay from that person's life and also another beautiful thing is that we see that the anointing of the lord in uh, isaiah 10:27 we see that where the anointing of the uh, holy spirit it's the anointing that breaks the yoke okay breaks the yoke is also uh, in other words it destroys destroys the work of the enemy so what is that the holy spirit the holy spirit what is the work of the holy spirit he will destroy what the devil is doing what does the devil do only thief's work steal kill destroy make person sick make them sad you know steal uh, make them poor that's what he does but when we go against him all his strongholds be destroyed we can pray that we can say i destroy i destroy what the devil is doing in the name of jesus now in using these words one more thing i'll tell you later on uh, I, i think it is there uh, later but uh, when we pray for people no uh, be a little sensitive because what happens is i you know this this whole zeal that i'm talking about um having anger against the uh, devil and what he's doing and all that is important but people will not understand it so when i go and i pray for someone let's say it's a new believer and uh, i'm praying and i say i destroy the sickness in the name of jesus now for this new believer he's wondering oh my gosh what did i do why is pastor using words like destroy uh, and all so i have to be sensitive maybe maybe you know i i uh, don't use terms like that in in front of the person but i know what i mean i might use a a, a simpler word in front of them but maybe like once a person has gone i've done this many times i say i destroy in jesus name under my breath okay and i issued that command but when i was praying with that person my prayer was gentler <laughs> i just said lord i, I you know i pray that the heap they would come out of this sickness i pray a release of your anointing i i declare a restoration of their health in the name of jesus so we have to be sensitive because also the mistake that sometimes we make when we are ministering to people is we scare them off you know when we say uh, all these things over the people i destroy and all uh, so be sensitive now if you know that this person uh knows uh, the kind of teaching that you are you have then okay both of you together agree let this stronghold be broken be destroyed makes sense but don't scare off people because unfortunately with our zeal you know zeal is good but zeal with wisdom is what is very very crucial otherwise what are we doing we will create more confusion sometimes people uh, you know say like i bind the spirit of death correct what they are praying is correct but when a person is already in in a place where they are so scared and you know they are already like you know death and darkness and all in my prayer when i use certain words no 
their fear will double and triple <laughs> so i hope you understand what i'm saying so just be sensitive use these words but be sensitive to the context maybe at times you cannot use strong words right in front of the people but you know what you're up to right so you can maybe pray under your breath or something because the devil will will hear it and you know uh, by faith when you said it you have destroyed so the, your your effort has not gone based but in public um, whether you can in in that context you can use words like this uh, just be a little careful okay fine now let's move on now remove remove is another thing we also see that um, there are yokes okay yokes or bondages bondages a better word uh, that the enemy puts on people remember that uh, woman in uh, luke 13 she was she was curled up she was all twisted but jesus said woman thou art loosed then what happened you know the the demon left her and when the demon left her that bondage was broken off of her life so the the holy spirit can remove that bondage whatever bondage it could be a bondage of sickness it could be a bondage of poverty it can be a bondage of fear sometimes you see people are so talented they are so you know they are brilliant they probably are better than you know another person who is enjoying uh, you know a, a good successful career but why is this person not doing well fear fear is holding them back they don't want to go for any interview or they don't want to take a take a, a job what's the problem bondage bondage of fear they're not able to break out of it but capability as good as somebody who's um, you know really doing well in the career so things like that so when we see oh when people are in these bondages and when i pray i go against the devil i take my authority and i say you know let this bondage be removed be broken in the name of jesus so what happens whatever bondage satan has put on them breaks right and they are set free and you know they can praise god so uh, these are all ways in which we can go directly against the devil then overcome or prevail overcome or prevail this is also some action word overcome is to remember the wrestling match uh, so these words subdue overcome these are all wrestling is good to understand it overcome is when you have two people intense conflict and you have one person overpowering the other one that is overcome where okay here is the devil he is trying to do all his stuff i overcome the devil i prevail i prevail on the enemy so that is about the victory consistent life of victory of a believer where every day i have to prevail i have to conquer subdue demonic works in my life in the lives of people around me in different ways i might rebuke i might command i might uh, you know resist i might uh, um, cry destroy remove so many things so i can do it with defense or i can go on the offensive but i prevail over the devil every day of my life so walk in victory okay now again coming to exercising authority uh, the way jesus taught us in matthew 16 uh, we see he says i've given you the keys of the kingdom keys representative of authority okay so when i have authority uh, i have to use it believers have authority only thing they don't know that they have authority now how can they use it in that same passage jesus taught us he said you, you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven so when we try to understand the context we recognize that though in the english you know it sounds like whatever i do on earth will be done in heaven but if you go back to the greek way of saying things what it meant was whatever god has allowed in heaven whatever he has loosed in heaven what is loosed in heaven you know god's peace his joy his blessings mm, nobody is sick in heaven there are no tears in heaven so all these things are loosed or they are abundant they are liberally available so that is loosed in heaven so when i minister to somebody i can lose the joy of the lord over their lives i have the authority to do that take what is from heaven and pour it off here on the earth 
So I can do that. I have been given the authority. That's what Jesus was saying. So thy kingdom come. What is thy kingdom? The rule and reign of God. And when God, Christ rules and reigns, his rule and reign in heaven is not intercepted in any way. No. So there are no demons there, nothing. So thy kingdom come means that kind of rule and reign will be seen in the lives of the people. That's all. So as a believer, I can lose the peace of God. I lose upon you the peace of God in the name of Jesus. Or, you know, I lose over my family. Shalom, 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 perfect peace. Does it work? It should work because Jesus said that by faith, when you release it, whatever you lose on earth, uh, whatever is allowed there, it will be allowed here. Okay. Similarly, the other thing he said, whatever you bind, right? So the way we understand is things that are bound in heaven. What are What is bound in heaven? The works of the devil. Okay. All his destructive works, all his, you know, destroying works. It's bound in heaven. So when I see anything which is not of God, it's simple, very simple. It's not of God, right? It's not of the kingdom. Ha, huh, okay. I'm going to bind it because it's not there in heaven. So I'm allowed to bind it. That's how we go about it. So uh, binding is like you are tying the hands. You're tying the hands of the devil. So what I could do is, again, coming back to the example of, uh, let's say, there is a, a confusion in the house. Okay? More specifically, you could take uh, maybe a husband and wife. There's a, mm, miscommunication, misunderstanding, all that going on between husband and wife. So what can they do in that situation? They know that, oh, there is some demonic influence causing this confusion between us. So you can bind the demonic spirits that are causing this confusion. So when you bind the spirits, what happens? It's like you're tying up their hands. No longer can you interfere. Come on, stay off. So they are staying off now, but that doesn't mean whenever we bind, it doesn't mean that the task is over. You know, binding is usually like a part of the process. So once you have bound, you can apply wisdom. So now, you know, you might have some peace uh, without the interference of these demonic uh, influences. During that time, you could probably think of, you know, praying together or reading God's word together. Or uh, if the situation is very challenging, then you might want to get some counseling, something. So you're applying wisdom to sort out the actual problem in a practical way. But how are you able to work on it? You've got some time out. Because you bound the influence of the spirits. Okay. So when we bind generally, it's like, okay, stay off guys. Uh, and then I have to look into what needs to be done also. So binding does not mean that, but I already bound. How, can, how come again we are, uh, you know, having this issue between us? Satan cannot permanently be bound off like that. Okay, even if you bind him in this particular situation, he can enter through some other situation. And as we said already, you know, lifelong, this, this wrestling match will go on. Okay. So um, we can bind, but also we see how we can respond with wisdom uh, to to resolve the loophole. Okay, maybe it's, it's about... Um, I'm just saying maybe communication is the issue, right? So maybe the husband and wife, they, they um, recognize it and they say, okay, this is how we are going to sort it out and we will communicate better and all. So then what happens? That crack through which Satan could uh, come and cause confusion is closed now. It's patched up. So you don't really need to bind the devil in that area anymore because he's out. You fixed it. So that's how, you know, we go about binding and applying this principle of binding the devil. You bind him, but at the same time, you go ahead and do what is required and lose. You know, lose again, I already said, we can lose things. And especially when it comes to like delivering people from demonic powers, you can say, I lose you in the name of Jesus. Um, so then what happens? You know, the, the hold of the demonic power on um, the person is broken. 
so like that woman in luke 13 who was bound and she was all crippled and jesus said woman thou art loosed she straightened up 18 long years she was bent over think about it think about it it was and again notice in this case the sickness is a result of oppression now not every sickness is a result of demonic oppression but in this case it was so when jesus dealt with the spirit the healing came so sometimes when we are praying for people we can say be healed you can say um you know um i command restoration but maybe you know we we see some results but not the full result but if that health condition is associated with a demonic influence what should i do i have to deal with the demon Okay. Uh, and uh, I've heard some, you know, Derek Prince is another good person when it comes to deliverance. He talks a lot about deliverance. He has a um, good exposure, many, many years of exposure in the demonic uh, delivering people. So he talks about how, unfortunately, in the uh, modern church, sometimes people don't like deliverance. You know, they feel like, oh, it's so messy. Uh, why should I get into casting out demons and, you know, letting people, people lose from the devil's oppression and all. so what happens uh, they don't associate if a situation is has its origin in the demonic unless you deal with the demonic it doesn't help so you know he funnily he says you can pray with the devil you can counsel the devil you can do a lot of things with the devil inside the person there will be no release. There will be no, mm, uh, you know, lasting change that you see because stronghold is not dealt with. Demons are not evicted. So when we discern, again, not every condition is demonic, okay? Please remember that. Don't go around, uh, I mean, we must not go around, um, you know, casting out demons when there are no demons. So we... When we deal with the demon, some health conditions will improve like that because it was the demon was the thing. So it doesn't help to, uh, you know, counsel and do all those things with the demon inside the person. So uh, that's a very real fact. So sometimes when we are ministering and we realize, yeah, this, this has a demonic origin to it, then we have to proclaim liberty. Remember Jesus when he came and he talked about himself in, in Luke chapter 4. He said that um, he has come to preach the good news to the poor. He's also come to proclaim liberty you know, to uh, the captives. Or who are the captives? The ones who are oppressed by the devil. Maybe through sickness, maybe through uh, you know some mental conditions, maybe through poverty, maybe through something else. Okay, So we we have to take authority and lose people. If we don't lose people, it doesn't help. It really doesn't help. They will remain in bondage. So lose people. Then allow and disallow. Okay? Allow and disallow is also uh, using our authority to command demonic powers. Remember Jesus, sometimes when the demons, they said, um, oh, Jesus, you are uh, uh, this. Why have you come here? You are the son of God. He said, don't, don't speak. You Or you read in those passages, he did not allow the demons to speak because, you know, they knew him. So he allowed and disallowed. Uh, so we can issue a command to, uh, you know, to kind of uh, bring order in that situation. Sometimes, you know, we will see... Um, that uh, there will be manifestations, some sort of unruly manifestations. So at that time, we can say, uh, I, I don't allow you to speak. Be quiet in Jesus' name. Or we might see some manifestations where um, uh, it is harmful for the individual. I remember once I've seen this one lady. She was so, uh, you know, kind of controlled by the demon. It was very sad to see her. Uh, she was 
all over the place you couldn't really control her movements and all that and she was uh, li- literally hit banging her hands to the wall and all and her hand also i i, I still remember this nail was beginning to chip off because that kind she was just hitting herself so you know there are times when you just have to issue a command and you say you know i don't allow you to do this or you know don't um, you know um, make the person fall or something like that so we have to take authority and exercise our command to allow or disallow uh, a certain specific you know activities of the demons and uh, we can even bind okay so basically be led by the spirit of god but use your authority we can use our authority uh, and uh, the demons have to listen i don't know whether i told you this i heard of a testimony where uh, you know the authority of of um, god's the name of jesus and the dominion which we carry right it's so real and it's so powerful um, that um, in this testimony i heard a pastor he was casting out uh, demons and he didn't know uh, there were many demons so he was not clear whether the demons are fully out or not so he, he shares about uh, casting out uh, several demons and then he came to a point he was still unsure so he just prayed for wisdom from the holy spirit lord i'm not able to find out whether everyone has come out or not what should i do and god gave him the wisdom and uh, uh, he just felt led to say are you st- are you still inside okay so he just said that and then he got a response <laughs> in the name of jesus uh, i i uh, am asking you are you still inside and then you know it's like your they are obligated to respond under authority the demons so the demons spoke up and they said yes we are still here okay so i was like wow i was little bit you know spooked by that but i i was like wow the authority that the believer carries the demons have to respond to it and that's the good part that i took away from it that uh, um this kind of authority you know jesus has has given us so uh we use it okay we use it we allow we disallow um then we can also pull down right we've already seen that when it comes to our um uh, mind where we are told that we must take every thought captive we pull down you know every thought that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of god so that is also an action word isn't it and this is more applicable in our personal walk with the lord where in our minds we will not allow anything that dishonors god you know i can't afford to have that thought i have to pull it down in jesus name uh, and and so i'm using my authority over the works of the devil uh, now you could you can use this pulling down of strongholds in other places as well you know you are pulling down strongholds um in in your city uh, as a in a region when you all are praying together so but basically action you move into action use your authority and you tear down the strongholds of the devil okay so these are things believers can do and we should be doing these things uh, so that we see god's glory manifest now there are other things that one can also engage in in order to see uh, the victory of god that would be prayer and intercession okay as uh, zeli shared earlier that when people prayed many people prayed you, know, you saw uh, the victory of god you saw um, the power of god against the devil so intercession is very helpful and remember paul after he describes the entire spiritual armor uh, towards the end ephesians 6:18 and he says you know uh, pray uh, for all the saints with all kinds of prayers in ephesians 6:18 he talks about it so he's kind of included it in the passage of the weapons so one weapon which i have is prayer and we know that prayer prophetic prayer can bring about a shamar you remember that shama is like protection protection hedge hedge uh, around us our families and our congregation and city and all that so when i pray when people pray devil is trying to penetrate i'm not able to what is happening you know like those sci-fi movies you have a shield right uh, and it, whatever in in those things it's some 
some field and all they create so anyway we are talking about the protection that happens through prayer so god uh, can uh, you know keep his people from the from the um, um, works of the devil so prayer is important so we can invest our time in prayer and uh, that is an offense against the devil devil will be so angry why are these people praying you know because they are praying i'm not able to enter i'm not able to do my plans are getting destroyed right so that's the point that's what we want so pray we can pray individually we can pray as families we can pray as couples we can pray in the church in our fellowship right so what's happening the devil will be clamoring what is this i can't do my thing but you know, raise up the shield of um, through prayer then in prophetic intercession we have seen how jesus told peter the devil he has tried to sift you like wheat or in other words uh, <clears throat> the devil is looking for opportunities to bring down people okay and particularly particularly you know we see this in scripture also that um uh, strike a shepherd and the sheep will be scattered so his main target can be leaders because he knows oh this is strategy if i getting one one believer is more challenging how about if the pastor falls <clears throat> Oh, how many people are there under the past? A hundred people. Hundred people will be in confusion. Hundred people will be affected. So he is ready and waiting, okay, to uh, to bring down people, especially those in leadership. Now, prayer is very helpful. You know, when we pray, I pray for myself as a leader, and you know, if the congregation understands the way Jesus prayed, he prayed for Peter, Peter, that you know your your faith should not fail. Satan desires to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. So we pray for one another. You know, we pray for our pastor friends. We pray for our church pastor, our leaders, and we say, Lord, you protect them. You, you know, uh, give them the wisdom against the schemes of the devil. Lord, we cancel. You know, you can use all these words. Remember, just now we said, destroy, mm, remove. Uh, pull down all of us have the authority so when i'm praying for my leaders my pastors i can say these words and say lord we we bind what the devil is doing against our pastors our leaders our congregation our young people our children lord we pray for their minds we pray that you know uh, uh, godly uh, godly wisdom will be theirs so when we pray that's an active way of fighting the devil and uh, it's an active way of stopping the devil from uh, doing his destructive work so you know we cannot overemphasize the power and the impact of prayer so pray 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 you know just pray uh, so that's very very important now next thing how can i fight the devil you can you and i can frustrate the devil with our righteous actions so you do you and i do the right thing if you uh, think about daniel okay uh, and his friends so what was the what was the decree at that time you must bow down to this mighty uh, structure of uh, you know the the king and uh, if you don't then we will put you in the fire so what was their spiritual warfare their spiritual warfare was what is the right thing to do god said you must only worship him and not you know a human being or a structure or things like that so they decided okay whatever happens we will do the right thing they did the right thing righteousness you remember breastplate of righteousness so it's it's breastplate will protect your vital organs you know your heart your your lungs which you need to for your basic functions okay your basic breathing your basic um, you know circulation of blood what if they are destroyed person is destroyed so righteousness when i walk in righteousness how is it helpful for me i am protected 
okay uh, yes shadrak meshak abednego they they uh, had a huge danger to face because they did the right thing they said no we can't we can't bow down so then what happened they were thrown into the the fiery furnace and there is nice one nice explanation about that fiery furnace it was heated so many times and you know people who went close to it things you know they got burnt even the soldiers who went close you know to put people into the furnace were burnt up it was so hot so hot but what was the outcome for their righteousness they had an encounter with god in the fiery furnace now you had the uh, a fourth man walking with them in the furnace and they came out and scripture says no no smell of fire you know if we end up just burning ourselves a little bit in the kitchen you might have something some smell right but you have a fiery furnace and men who went into it and who came out of it no smell of fire so what is what is happening it's spiritual warfare where god is saying look my protection on you will be many fold when you do the right thing don't get scared nothing will happen to you okay i am with you so that encouragement you know was there with shadrak meshak when abednego and they even said god even if anything happens this is the right thing you no know? so we will do what is right so we are here to do what is right and again in in romans 13 you know we uh, would read about the right actions that one needs to take uh, and that puts us in a better place now let me just quickly read off read um, romans 13 for us and i think that i can only complete till there but that's that's fine we have sufficient and more time to go through our course yeah and also next week uh, i think i i need to give you another assignment so i will do that okay so romans 13 verses 11 through 14 it says and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed the night is far spent days at hand therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk properly as in the day not in revelry and drunkenness not in lewdness and lust not in strife and envy but put on the lord jesus christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust so basically we are told to live a righteous life like don't make any provision for the works of the flesh instead we walk in the spirit it says put on christ live as you know in the day awake and uh, live as you are in the day put on the armor of light so if you want to summarize it and just put it in the simplest way what we are being told is a believer should walk like a believer what is a believer to be a righteous person that's who we are in Christ Jesus so our life has to match who we have become believer be like a believer be a righteous person be a, a person of the light you know do righteous deeds uh, it shouldn't be the other way you know isn't it so sad like we are believers but our actions and our words and our lifestyle is no match to who, who we are claiming to be so in put simply put believer be like a believer okay walk in righteousness and that becomes an offense against the devil and the devil be so mad he'll be like no don't don't walk in righteousness only then i can get some cracks through which i can enter your life i can get some foothold you know i can get um uh, some place give the devil no place so righteousness you know i want us to understand class that righteousness puts us in a position of immunity and the devil can't get us okay i'll discuss little more about this later uh, in the next class we can stop here and uh, i think this uh, gives me an opportunity to promote or you know commercial uh, uh, commercial break sort of a thing uh, james the book of james which we are studying at apc sunday services uh, you know i just want to uh, encourage you whenever you can you can the recordings are available and if you 
have the time to attend the live service uh, then yeah you know that is if you are not attending your own otherwise please attend your own church uh, uh, you know be faithful there but the book of james the study of the book of james is also this very practical believer be like a believer live like a believer what should be the the behavior the lifestyle of a believer so um, uh, currently we are doing that study so it will be good for us to engage and learn from it okay so let me stop here any thoughts comments anything um, before we pray and close for today All right. So I'm um, really hoping that you're getting something out of this and, uh, you know, may God bless you and may you be able to um, live a victorious uh, life every day in Christ by using, you know, all, all the things that we are learning in this class. So, you know, God bless you. Uh, I request anybody, can you please pray and uh, wrap up this today's class? Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we praise you for the opportunity you gave us to learn from your word. Lord, we pray that as we continue to live our life in this world, help us to exercise the authority and to see your kingdom come and uh, to see it manifest in its fullness, Lord. We thank you for all of us in the class. We pray that we will continue to grow in your word and walk according to your plans, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. amen amen thank you john thank you thank you everyone god bless you have a wonderful weekend um you know worship the lord together with your church families we'll meet again next uh, next week so take care bye for now